Okay, so now we start the second talk, and the speaker is Jairo Bocci from Santiago again, and uh, he's going to speak under the title uh, Ergodic Optimization, oh, sorry, Optimization of Lyapunov Exponent. Please. Thank you, Professor Tsuji. Uh, yeah, actually, I just noticed that uh, the, the official title in the proceedings is Optimization of uh, Birkhoff average and Lyapunov exponents. So actually, I'll start with op optimization of Birkhoff averages. Okay, so this is, will be part uh, one. So this is kind of, um, um, well, it's not an old theory, but is, many results are not new. Um, so uh, the references, the usual references are, or the most complete references are these surveys by Oliver Jenkinson. And, uh, uh, well, I, I will explain what this means, but it's related to some other problems in Lagrangian mechanics and thermodynamical formalism. But unfortunately, uh, I, I won't have time to go into this. Uh, into these relations. All right. So the, the general setting actually for the whole talk will be the following. We have a, is the top topological uh, dynamics. We have a, a, a continuous map acting on a compact metric space, right? And then we consider the set of invariant probability measures with the usual topology. And uh, as you know, this is a compact and convex set. And the set of extremal points is the set of ergodic probability measures, right? Okay. So um, let's consider them falling. Now we are given another piece of information, a function, a at least continuous function, sometimes called a potential. Uh, and then you just integrate this function against all the, 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 the invariant probability measures. And then, of course, what you are doing is essentially taking a, a, a sorry, uh, a projection, you're taking a projection of your, your or the, this is a cartoon of your set of invariant measures, and you are just project, projecting in a, a fine way in a line. So you obtain an interval, right? And these two numbers that appear, these numbers that appear as the extremes of your interval, they are the, let's say, the ergodic maximum and the ergodic minimum of your function, okay? So, um, yeah, and oops, if, I'm sorry. If you have a measure, a measure that projects on the maximum, on beta, will be called a maximizing measure. You can make a, you can also consider minimizing measures, but for, by symmetry, let's focus on the maximizing measures, let's say. Okay, so um, it's not, uh, is an exercise that, you can always find a, a, an ergodic measure that projects on beta. This is essentially comes from the fact that the, 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 the extremes of this, this thing are the ergodic measures. Okay, so in particular, for some reason, you know that this maximizing measure is unique. It must be one of these uh, ergodic measures, which in the cartoon are, are these, these dots. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I said ergodic optimization of Birkhoff averages. So where are the Birkhoff averages? Well, you've seen some integral, but if, if you know, of course, if you know Birkhoff theorem, so you know that uh, the, there is a relation with uh, average, with time averages. So let's use this notation for the Birkhoff sum. And so here you see a Birkhoff average. So I can take the link soup, because I'm not sure this point is generic for uh, Birkhoff theorem. And then I take the sup of over all the points x, and then I re reobtain my the same quantity beta. And I also, I can invert these two things and write a limit and then a sup, and I reobtain the same thing again. And now it's not, uh, kind of nicer because this is a true limit by uh, subadditivity. Okay. So um, the the problem here is to understand maximizing measures. That's the goal of this ergodic optimization. So I'm, I'm not sure this is the correct word, but I say meta problem because it generates a bunch of problems if you change the hypothesis, et cetera. Okay. 
So let let, let uh, um, so in, uh, I I want to show you a, a few of the more interest results that I consider to be the more interesting ones to give you some intuition about this maximizing measures. Okay. So first, you you have this property of generic uniqueness. So if uh, you you take any any reasonable space of continuous functions, then generically there, the maximizing measure is unique. So let's put some explanation. Reasonable here is just a, um, a space of functions um, that continuously and densely uh, embeds into the C0 functions with the C0 norm. So we can approximate the C0 functions by these things. Well, this could be just the continuous functions, but could be, I don't know, um, differentiable functions if you are in a manifold, etc. And generic property, as usual, is just a property that holds on a density delta subset of uh, a bare space. Okay. Now, let's consider this inverse problem where y y instead of given the function and looking for the measure, you you're, you're given the measure and look, look for the function. More precisely, suppose you have an ergodic measure, which was one of these vertices in this cartoon, and you want a, a function, right, uh, for which the, this, this particular measure is the unique, unique maximizing measure. Of course, without you, it's only interesting if you want it to, you, if you ask it to be unique, otherwise it could be just a constant. Okay, so this, um, so Jenkinson proved, proved that this is, this is always possible. And now we have this question, um, or, or maybe this trivial remark, is if, if your measure is very simple, let's say supported on a periodic point, or let's say on a fixed point, then you can take it to be as regular as you want. For, if you have a fixed point, you can take something like that, and then it's infinity. Huh? But what happens is your measure is very complicated, and it's, it's difficult to come up with a function that uh, satisfies this conclusion, right? And can it, can it be, a re can you take, uh, how regular can it be? So the answer that is that in general, not too much, and this will follow, you'll see why in a moment. So let's, let's talk about, uh, uh, let's, let's introduce some hypotheses. Until, until now, everything was completely, e extremely general, right? O only assuming continuity. But now let's put more structure. Let's assume that our dynamics is hyperbolic. Um, okay, I won't define what hyperbolic is, but uh, I, I will let, certainly want to, an OSF to be considered hyperbolic, or um, let's say a uniformly expanding map is also hyperbolic, and the usual, uh, the simplest examples of hyperbolic dynamics also will, of course, will be there, or shifts, etc. <clears throat> if and let's suppose that function is not only continuous, but at least holder, right? So, some regularity. Then, uh, we have this theorem, sometimes called the subordination principle, that says that you can find a, a compact invariant set uh, where all the maximizing measures live. So, you have this uh, K for such that a measure is maximizing if and only if it's supported and co is contained there. Okay, so this is a theorem, and uh, as a consequence, your, um, ah, now it's clear that th this result cannot be true for continuous functions, because remember that uh, um, by the previous theorem, let's say you have an uh, expanding map on the circle, something like that, consider Lebesgue measure by the previous Jenkinson's theorem, there is a, a continuous function for which the unique maximizing measure is Lebesgue. But Lebesgue has full support, so cannot satisfy this kind of conclusion, right? Obviously. So, so the situation becomes more interesting if you assume some regularity and some interesting dynamics. Okay. Now, um, this this thing is actually a corollary of something uh, sometimes called the Manier lemma, or uh, Jenkinson calls it the the revelation lemma, another name that appears is the non-positive non-positive Leibniz lemma, and um, 
Well, this, this has been discovered several, type, several times by several people, and um, there are several form formulations. I won't enter into details. I, I won't even review what this revelation lemma is, but if you know the Leipzig uh, lemma, you just replace equalities by inequalities, and then you have the statement. Um, now, yeah, in, it's called the revelation because it has this as a corollary, so it reviews, it reviews immediately where are the, the maximizing measures. Okay, so let's, let's go on. And <clears throat> now, um, okay, so what, what, what are the big goals in all this? I think the nicest, uh, the, 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 the big conjecture is something like this, which I, I also write meta conjecture because you can, um, you can tweak with the meanings of some words and obtain different mathematical statements. Um, but essentially, if you have a, uh, and uh, uh, this, is, uh, this was formulated more or less, no, not extremely precisely, but uh, in this uh, paper, 96 paper by Hunt and Ott, and essentially they say, if you have a chaotic dynamics, then typically um, regular function, regular potential functions have the properties, have the property that the maximizing measure should have some low complexity. So let's, uh, the, there are some gaps there and you see, let's feel, well, okay, a chaotic they don't define, but uh, the, the, our usual hyperbolic examples should be, are, are certainly there and maybe you can try to think about non-uniformly non hyperbolic things, but this is already too difficult for the, the usual example, uniformly hyperbolic examples. Now, typical can be either in a topological sense or on a probabilistic sense. In, 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 in their paper, they really mean the probabilistic sense. That's clear if you read it. And um, regular is at least holder, but it, why not? You can maybe, if, if even more regular, you have a stronger result. Yeah? <clears throat> and local, low complexity, in, in, their, in, in their paper, it means precisely supported on a periodic orbit. So it's the least complexity you can get in, essentially, finite support for the measure. But uh, still you can play, let's say, try to, to prove something less ambitious, let's say t zero topological entropy is already an interesting problem. Okay, so there are many results on, on this and I don't have time to, to explain the story, but <clears throat> the I'll jump to the best result that we have, which is uh, by Contreras a few years ago, who proved that, that if your dynamics is uniformly expanding, then for generic Lipschitz maps, the maximizing measure is supported on a single periodic orbit. And, and it, okay, so it's actually better than that because your, your generic set con uh, contains, has dense interior. So can, it, it's an open and dense set satisfies this property. But still, uh, uh, an open and dense set can be small in sense of measures, in, of measure. It's difficult to, to speak about what's the measure on the, this infinite dimensional space, but you can try to, to come up with a few definitions and the, there is a, a nice notion of typicality in the, the probabilistic sense that's called prevalence. It's a very strong definition. And it, it's not difficult, but I, 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 I won't explain it. And, and, and then you could try to improve Contreras' result, proving, a prevalent, proving prevalence here. Well, I tried to do this with uh, Yue Zhang. We, we couldn't, but we obtained a, a result that is nice in a more restricted class of uh, functions. <coughs> okay. And I couldn't finish this introduction to um, classical or, or commutative ergodic optimization without mentioning this example. It's a very beautiful example that was discovered independently a few times. Well, I think it may be probably this, I know, well, I'm not sure, but uh, the, the, there are some independence, non-trivial independence relations here. B Bush certainly was aware of the of other works, but um, the, 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 these people noticed the following, that if you take this, w w one of the simplest dynamics you can get, uh, you can study, the, the doubling map on the circle, 
and you look at trigonometric polynomials. And by some trivial reductions, you can just work with this one-dimensional family of cosines that are translated. And then what, what happens? Um, so for every parameter here, so for every element in this family, the, the maximizing measure is unique and has zero entropy, so very low complexity. Actually, is a Sturman, which is much is a very strong notion of having low complexity, and has several. There is a combinatorial, and there, there are several ways of defining this, but it's an extremely natural thing for the doubling map, at least. <clears throat> and actually, the result is much stronger because it says that. Well, so these Sturman measures, they can be periodic, but they cannot, can also have, uh, can, can be more complicated, you can have infinite support. Uh, however, the, the set of, uh, when you have, uh, when this thing is not periodic, then you are in some bad set of parameters, and this bad set is extremely small, has zero, has even zero Hausdorff dimension. So you, the, so you see that at least in this family, the philosophy of this Hunter-Ott conjecture holds perfectly. Okay. Okay, so this was the first part. And now let's talk about uh, Lyapunov exponents. So essentially, I will, instead of take a continuous function, let's take square matrices. And then, well, I could, uh, I could take the sum of the square matrices, but it wouldn't be very funny. So let's take the, the products. And then we, you measure the, the top Lyapunov exponent, which is the exponential growth rate of this product. Right. If, it, if it exists, it's starting from a point x. And uh, uh, by Kingman's uh, subadditive ergodic theorem, this limit indeed exists for almost every point with respect to any invariant measure. And then you can, uh, well, uh, our functions are continuous, so these things are automatically bounded, and then you can take the integral. They are also trivially measurable. And so this is a kind of average, average Lyapunov exponent. So let's optimize this quantity, okay? Like before we were optimizing the integral. Now we are dealing with this thing. Um, I should provide some motivation why, why people study this. Uh, well, the, the, this was studied before in a more particular case that is now called uh, step cost cycles. Essentially, well, we'll see later what the step cost cycle is, but it's uh, um, basically a locally constant cost cycle over the shift. And so this was introduced a long time ago. The, 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 the second notion, or more precisely, it's exponential. It's called joint spectral radius. In this case of step cost cycles, it was introduced in 1960 by Rota and Strang. Um, and uh, late, it wa the, it, this wasn't very much studied for a long time until 92 when it kind of exploded and for, it was very popular for some time. And um, because this has applications in wavelets and, okay, I don't know if this is good motivation for you, but at least it is not, it wasn't me we came up with this idea, certainly. And there also the, the, the other quantity, the minimum, uh, the, the infimum, was also studied, okay. And, and if you see the, the, these papers, they usually don't, or the, at least the initial ones don't, don't, don't say, uh, much about or anything about the ergodic theory, so they, they use other characterizations of these quantities. For example, you, can, you have this one, similar to what we see in the commutative case. Um, okay, but now the, the basic difficulty is if you compare to the commutative case, you, before you were just looking integrals that are these affine functions on the space of measures, and now this thing is, not a, is not, certainly not affine, not even continuous in general. It is upper semi-continuous. That's the hope, the best you can hope in a very general, without a further hypothesis. And so as an upshot, the, 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 the beta is always attained because by a consequence of this upper semi-continuity, but alpha is not necessarily attained. Okay. 
so um, well actually le so le le let's focus for now on the on the beta quantity per because it's more well behaved but I I'd like to show you an example very quickly I would like to show you oops an example showing that this thing is not necessarily attained because it's an example that's instructive in several uh, in a few ways so Let's consider the, 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 your dynamics is the shi one-sided shift on two symbols, and, and your matrix, um, you, you have uh, two possibilities for the matrix f of x, and it is depends only on the symbol in the position zero, and so you have these two. So it's a, a matrix function which is constant on these two basic cylinders, and, and you see that you, I, I have here a hyperbolic matrix, and uh, a rotation of 90 degrees. So we to may expect something na nest is coming here because it's a kind of cruel thing of multiplying a, 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 a hyperbolic matrix by this, uh, this rotation. So what happens in this, in this exact example is that, uh, um, the, well, the, 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 the minimizing measure is not, the, does not exist. And, and the proof is, is, is really easy. You, you, for, if you consider, take a, a, a large power of the hyperbolic matrix, and then you multiply by a single rotation, then the effect with the eigenvalues is that they become complex, non-real, and, and then essentially you mix the, the two eigenvalues that uh, were very different here, the very different modulus if you take the power of this matrix, and now they have the same modulus, right? And so if you take the measure supported on a corresponding periodic orbit and compute the Lyapunov exponent, you see that it's close to minus log 2, which is the, the, essentially the average between this, the, the log of this guy and log of that guy. But it's not exactly log of minus log of 2 because you needed to use a single, uh, one rotation. And this has a little effect on the exponent. And so it's not exactly log of 2. So, Okay, so we, uh, the minimum is, uh, is less or minimum, or the infimum of the Lyapunov exponent is less or equal than this, and let's show that it's actually equal. But l let's just pause for a, a moment and see that this is an example of discontinuity of the Lyapunov exponent with respect to the, to the invariant measure, because clearly these things converge to the measure supported on the fixed point in the weak star topology, and for that measure, you have a very different Lyapunov exponent. Okay, so let's conclude the proof. Let's prove the, the reverse inequality. And this is very easy because you have a, a very easy bound on, on, on lambda one, which is the integral of uh, uh, the log of the square root of the determinant. And you see that you just look at these two determinants. The, this is one fourth, this is one. So you get a trivial bound for this integral. But then you see that if this inequality is strict, then sometimes you should have this matrix. Uh, no, um, no, I'm sorry. If this is an equality, then it means that uh, um, this is always, maybe this is, uh, if, let's see, if this is a, an equality, then the other one must be an inequality because, um, I'm sorry, the, if this is an inequality, then means that the, you're only using the first matrix, but if you're only using the first matrix, then the exponent is very large, right? So that's the end of the proof. <coughs> okay, so imitating Hunt and Ott in this, in this setting, we can formulate a similar conject meta conjecture. Okay, so if, if your T is chaotic, then for typic, typical cocycles, um, these functions are called cocycles, by the way. Um, typical regular enough cocycles should have uh, maximizing measures of uh, low complexity. Okay, maybe supported on a periodic orbit. And uh, well, uh, there, there, there is a result by myself and Michel Runs that fits in this philosophy, but uh, there is still much to be done here. So I report on some, uh, something else we can do. So remember that the, we had this subordination principle which was based on this Manier lemma. And so we, uh, we investigated, okay, what about cocycles? Let's try to prove these basic tools in ergodic optimization. Let's 
try to prove this kind of thing in for Lyapunov exponents. So we have this statement. Um, you, you, so the, the, the beginning is the, the, what, what you have seen in the subordination principle of Manier lemma. You need to assume at least some hyperbolicity. In this, uh, here we ask for a homeomorphism, and, and uh, now f should be a holder cycle. But you, you, we need more assumptions. Um, so I, I, um, something that appears a lot in, in the in the recent literature, or uh, maybe in the last 10 or 15 years. Uh, the fiber bunched cycles I don't have uh, time to explain what, what they are. If, if we have a strong fiber bunching condition, then we prove the existence of these sets where all the Lyapunov maximizing measures live. Actually, our statement, we need a stronger version of fiber bunching, but after um, some discussion with uh, Clark Butler and Kiho Park, we think we can remove this um, strong uh, fiber bunch hypothesis. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope this paper to, to appear in the archive soon. And as, as before, this kind of result is obtained as a consequence of this revelation lemma, yeah, or Manier lemma. So we have a, a version of this for cos cycles. And there are some related work by Morris in a more restricted situation, namely of one step cos cycles. Okay. So let's go to part three, where we look for all the Lyapunov exponents at the same time, all right? And, um, well, uh, so I'll give you a sketch of what I think are the most interesting problems in in the in this uh, in this uh, topic uh, there are actually there are not very few results there are a few but uh, if you want to for more information can look the the the, the my proceedings pay my, my my paper for for the Congress which is also on our kind okay so what are the Lyapunov exponents to start um, so basically, you, you do the same as before, but instead of looking the norm of your products, you look the singular values, right? So the i Lyapunov exponent is defined in this way, right? Where Si is the i biggest singular value. So using Kingman again and some linear algebra, you can prove that these limits, as before, these limits exist almost everywhere with respect to any invariant measure. And uh, if uh, your measure is ergodic, then these limits are, are co constants almost everywhere. Okay. Um, so what I, I, I will focus now on the ergodic measures because I, I, I don't want to make, take average of the second Lyapunov exponent if the measure is not ergodic because it's kind of funny, right? Um, so, so let's define this thing, the Lyapunov vector of ergodic measure, and then the set of all Lyapunov vectors, let's call it the Lyapunov spectrum, okay? And in principle, the only thing you know about this thing, this set, is that it's bounded because, let, 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 let's suppose our cycles are always composed of invertible matrices to avoid the, these limits to become minus infinity, right? So these are, this is a bounded set contained in something that may be called the positive chamber of RD, which is the set of ordered uh, vectors. Okay, so here's a picture in dimension two. Um, so you have something below the diagonal. Well, actually it's called the, the wall. May touch the wall, right? If, if, you, if you go most to the right, then you are maximizing the first Lyapunov exponent. That's w what we called beta f before. And if you minimize it, then you get alpha f. Okay. And uh, maybe a m more interesting situation is if you go to SL to three dimension, but you suppose that the ter determinant is one. So in terms of Lyapunov exponents, this means that this implies that the, the sum of the exponents is zero. 
So actually, you can restrict it to, to, to this two-dimensional space, this plane, and then the, the positive chamber is this, uh, this cone, right? Oh, well, if, if you put the, uh, if you keep, it's clearly a cone in, in a plane. Huh? And then you have the, your, um, your Lyapunov spectrum somewhere there. Um, there, there is a recent uh, work, uh, some works by Sagri Serd, um, where he defines a notion of joint spectrum in a different context, but it's something very related to that, and he proves very interesting results. Uh, but he's more focused on what happens with random IID products. But he works on general, much more general groups, so it's, uh, I recommend you to, to look this paper, it's very nice. <clears throat> okay, let, let me mention one of the nice results that, we, and very general results that we have in, 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 this, um, in this subject which has the, 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 the same nice setting of uh, hyperbolicity for the dynamics and regularity for the co-cycle, right? And uh, the, it says that uh, the periodic, the measure supported on periodic orbits will form a dense subset here, which is not trivial, of course, because you know the even, uh, of course, you know that you, you can approximate any measure by measure supported on periodic orbits if your dynamics is hyperbolic. However, the exponent is not continuous, so the theory is not trivial. Actually, it's an annals paper. And, and it's not the only theorem in the paper. Eh? Um, okay. So again, let's uh, formulate a meta conjecture. And uh, well, the, the good thing about the meta conjecture is that it's so vague that it's difficult for somebody to come with a counterexample. And okay, so let's suppose the dynamics is hyperbolic as before. You have a typical regular cost cycle. What 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 we expect to happen? Uh, we expect this set to be a convex, or, or, or yeah, to be a convex set, or, or maybe it will be more conservative. Maybe the the the, the, the interior. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't write compact here. Okay, I mean, let's let's leave it like that. The boundary is fishy. I will explain what this means in a in a minute, but it's a kind of strange boundary. It's not, uh, it won't be a polygon. And uh, the, the points in the boundary, but that are outside the walls, they, they should be um, Lyapunov vectors of unique measures. And these measures, um, unique ergodic measures, right, of uh, low complexity. And let's put low complex. Let's define it here low complex as zero topological entropy. You shouldn't expect for uh, here to have uh, measures supported on periodic orbits, of course, because there are two. The boundary is 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 not countable. So let's write like that. Yeah. And the subordination property, which is, we can restated in this, in this form, that the, these measures have uniquely ergodic support, okay? Okay, so to, to make this more concrete, let, let's see an example where all these properties ho indeed uh, hold, okay? Let's see a theorem where you have all these conclusions. Yes, uh, of course, it's not, uh, it's, a, it's a very precise uh, uh, example, so it's not, uh, it doesn't guarantee that typical things will be like that, but um, you, you, again, you have a step called cycle, and now you have this, this pair of matrices, and then you consider the in corresponding step called cycle. Then what happens, you, um, this is the, the Lyapunov spectrum, it's a convex set, the boundary contains a piece of the wall, for example, the, the two fixed points, they correspond to this point, this Lyapunov vector and that Lyapunov vector, okay? You have these two parabolic matrices, but they are uh, parabolic in, in different ways. Eh? Now, 
this, this part of the boundary is a curve, a continuous curve, that has a dense subset of corners, okay, points of non-differentiability. So that's what, uh, that's fishing. The, the, let's define fishy as having this, as having such property, okay? Dense subset of corners outside the wall, of course, because the wall is, the wall is differential. <coughs> and for each of these points, there is a unique measure, ergodic measure that attains the, the, the corresponding Lyapunov vector, and it is Sturmian. And in particular, it has zero entropy. Okay, so this, uh, this, uh, this is a corollary, if you collect the results on, on, on these two papers by uh, Morris, uh, Anderson Cotters, Har, Sidorov, Tays, and uh, Sidorov again, then, then you can, it's not difficult to, to, to prove this. Actually, they were interested in another problem called, called the finiteness conjecture, which was well, I won't define what it is, but uh, it's, well, they, 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 it was refuted in this paper, and they did a detailed study of, of this thing. And uh, you can, if you reformulate the things in the appropriate way, then you, you, you get this example. Okay. <clears throat> so, if we want to begin this study, let, let's look to a very simple case. Hmm? Let's consider a diagonal matrix, and moreover, Let's suppose that uh, the, the, uh, the, this, these things are exponentials of fun continuous functions, one bigger than the other. And, and, and this is a really a, a very simple case because the, uh, the, the Lyapunov vector is just the integral, the, the first uh, Lyapunov exponent is the integral of the function f1, and the second is the integral of the function f2. So let's say that the, the vector is the integral of this vectorial function. <coughs> So in particular, this depends continuously on the measure you know, by, with respect to the weak star topology. And, and so the Lyapunov ex, is spe, a spectrum is a, a compact convex set, right? And uh, the extremal points are attained by ergodic measures. And it, it, this is what is called a rotation set. And, and, and since I assume this function to be bigger than to dominate the other, then it, this spectrum is away for, from the wall. You cannot have uh, exponents, the upper of exponents close to each other. Good. So you regain the commutativity, right? So you are back into a commutative situation. And, um, well, e even if this, this seems like extremely peculiar, but actually it's not so peculiar because there is something called uh, dominated splitting that we will see in a moment, but it's an open property that is, says that, uh, let's say in dimension two, etc., you have something very similar to that. So you recover with these dominated splittings, you will recover commutativity again, and then life will be simpler. Not trivial, but simpler. <clears throat> so. Now, now I need. Uh, now at, at this moment, we, we, we have seen that we, we jump at one step, right? Before going to this, this study of Lyapunov exponents, we should have studied before uh, mood, uh, vectorial ergodic optimization. Okay, so the, 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 I have just, I could say more about this, but I, I, I concentrate everything on a single slide. So, this is the definition of the rotation set of a continuous function that, uh, with respect to this dynamics T. It's a, a compact and convex set, and you can think of, of it as an, uh, a projection again, a fine projection of your set of invariant measures, but now on RD, okay? And again, we have a very beautiful example, which is this one. It's basically a reformulation of what we've seen before in the end of part one. If you have the doubling map, and and your vectorial function is cosine sine, or maybe exponential uh, of ix, something like that. Then here is the rotation set. It has a fishy boundary, so the, the, even if you can see, there are infinitely many corners in this thing. Each corner com comes from a periodic orbit, and actually all the, point, all the points of the boundary correspond to measures with uh, very low complexity, Sturmian, again. Okay, so it's a nice example. And, 
and it, it was called the uh, uh, they, they actually the, the, this uh, let me be more precise here the, all, all of this was proved by Thierry Bush but it was seen experimentally by Jenkinson it appears in uh, appendices of his thesis uh, I believe so okay as I said, we, we, we could ask some questions about vectorial ergodic optimization. We could remember that this Manier lemma was a basic, uh, a basic tool, and uh, I, uh, I, I thought uh, about this. And, and, and then with uh, Vincent de Lecroix, we, 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 we found that the Manier lemma is false in, for vectorial ergodic optimization. If you write the obvious statement, that you, you can think of, it, it doesn't work. But uh, yes, I, let's, uh, so I will skip details about that and uh, go, go back to cocycles, right? And so let's investigate, let's discuss a little m in more detail this concept of dominated splittings that I mentioned before that allows you to recover commutativity. So suppose your cocycle has an invariant splitting which is the usual thing you can, um, it's the obvious definition, uh, 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 splitting in two bundles of constant dimensions, okay? So this is splitting is called dominated if the expansion along the, let's say the, which, the first bundle is always dominated, the dominates any expansion in the second bundle. So this can be written as this kind of inequality where C is a constant is smaller than one. Actually, um, this norm should be allowed to, 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 to depend on the point, on the base point X, like a Riemannian norm. Uh, this, uh, and, the, and there are several definitions. So the existence of this um, uh, adapted norm was proved by Gourmelon. I have a, a Gourmelon and myself, we also uh, obtain another characterization that says that it, uh, there is a dominated splitting if and only if you see a, a exponential separation on the, on the singular values of this product. Then, so it's a way of characterizing uh, the existence of dominated splittings without prescribing the splittings. But let's move forward. Um, every cocycle admits a finest dominated splitting. Maybe, uh, maybe this was first noticed by Bonatti, Diaz, and Pujols. And if, uh, if, let's allow for the trivial dominated splitting where you have a single bundle. And if you have the maximum possible number of bundles, then the splitting is simple, and then we are basically in this commutative situation where the exponents are given by integrals. And a possible strategy to prove one of uh, one of the items in the, that meta conjecture, the convexity of the Lyapunov uh, um, spectrum, is to use subsistence with simple dominated splitting. This appears in a few papers. Okay. <coughs> um, now, if a cocycle admits a dominated splitting, then trivially the, the spectrum is away from some wall. The wall, uh, this wall, if the, the dominating bundle has dimension i. The converse is false, and the converse is false, but perhaps it's true for typical cocycles because the non counter examples are too delicate. Uh, if you want to see a simple construction of a counter example, you can look at a paper by Renato Veloso that ap appeared in the archive uh, recently. But, the, but the, 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 these constructions are, are known. Uh, there are other papers that this, this observation is not new. <coughs> So let, let me add one more question. Let's add this thing as a, a, a new part of the conjecture. Maybe I'm getting, I'm getting into trouble in making too many conjectures, but let's put that. So the Lyapunov exponent typically should touch the wall if and only if you, uh, there is no dominated splitting. And, and let's add even another another conjecture or maybe a question maybe, it should, maybe this should be called a question but uh, okay here it is in the same setting you can find a larger convex set that um, let it's called uh, using the terminology from control, control theory should be called a Morse set 
which is inter was intersection with the, the positive chamber is the Lyapunovic spectrum, and which is invariant by reflections across the walls it touches. Okay, so that's lots of information. Let's see the picture. So here it is. The, suppose this is the, your candidate Lyapunovic spectrum, and it's touching the wall. Now you reflect it across the wall, and now you take the union of these two things, this is not convex, so I, I, I guess that this shouldn't be typ a typical property. Now this looks more typical because the, reflect, the union of, with the reflection is a convex, some, something convex. And here is this, a situation, where, let's say in SL3R, where you touch both walls so you don't have dominations and do, then you, you apply the vial group, you take all possible reflections and get this kind of blob, perhaps a convex thing, and I'm out of time, but this is the last slide. So uh, let, let me give you the rationale of, for this, um, for this uh, possible statement. So the, the, the rationale is the following. <clears throat> um, the lack of domination should allow you to mix some Lyapunov exponents, right? So uh, in one example that we've seen with these two matrices, you have uh, hyperbolistic here, but this, this uh, rotation uh, uh, certainly kills any domination may have and allows you for, to mix the two Lyapunov exponents that you have from, from this guy. Uh, the, this philosophy appears in many, many works, and certainly from the works of Manier since the, the 70s, and uh, the, here are some implementations of this philosophy in, in different contexts. Um, okay. On the other hand, I think this, uh, this shouldn't be very, very, uh, very, doesn't look like an easy problem because on the other hand, there is some reason to expect to, 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 to you, you need to be careful here because if you go to this setting of um, step cycles, then I, I have a, a, a conjecture with uh, Bassam Fayad that would imply that this property, this uh, convexity thing, doesn't work for typical cosecons in a probabilistic sense. Because uh, essentially, if you have too few matrices, it, it's, it's difficult to, to take advantage of the lack of domination unless they, the, these matrices are very, the angles of rotation are very peculiar. So it's a, it looks like a difficult problem. But on the other hand, you can say, well, these typical cycles are not typical. So we, maybe if you have sufficiently many, you have a continuum of matrices, then you can take advantage of, of your, uh, of this setting and, and find the, the mixed exponents in the way you want. So I conclude here. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I think uh, I can accept one or two questions or comment. Do you have some? Okay. Okay. I have a question about the low complexity of the maximizing measure. So in operation and research, for example, it's for practical reasons, very interesting to find the maximum uh, of the Birkhoff averages. Uh, for, say, functions above a shift, that depend on only finitely many coordinates. So you go, you tell them, yes, your maximum will be on a periodic orbit. But a periodic orbit, to find it, has uh, exponential complexity. So no computer can find it. And so do you have some algorithm to find the orbit or to bound its period, for example? Uh, no, I haven't, but... Uh, um this question is where we studied. If you have a, a, a locally constant function over the shift, then you, you can uh, restate the, the, this whole uh, problem of finding the maximizing measure in some, something, a problem about graphs that has been studied by, by, by graph people. And they, 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 there are several algorithms to solve this particular problem. So maybe. And they I don't are, know how efficient they are. They N, are. I, NP, I, I NP, NP hard, no? Uh, I don't know. Uh, it, there is something called Carpus algorithm, and then, then there are odd, newer ones, but uh, I, I, we, we should check. But 
still you could approximate the Lyapunov uh, the, the maximizing measure by, a, let's say, approximating a function by a locally constant one, applying this algorithm, and then... So the, do you believe that the function that is not discrete but like more regular, uh, it's easier to find the maximizing measure or? Uh? Yeah, not discrete, but more regular. Uh, well, I the mean, whole these, philosophy these measures is that, that you say they exist, you can find them? Typically, the, it shouldn't be too difficult to find the maximizing measure because it will be a periodic orbit of low period. But, okay, for very nasty examples, I don't know. I don't exactly, know what's going happen. Exactly, that's the question. Low period, what does it mean? Low period. You said low period. Locally? Low period, you said. Small ah, period. Yeah, that's what the does conjecture. That's the conjecture. Yeah, well, what is the conjecture? This the conjecture by Hunt and Ott that uh, they have low period in the title of the paper. So, but it, it, what does it mean low? Ten? There, there, are, there are some more quantitative versions that you, if you look this paper, they suppose they are... Okay. They, they, <laughs> this okay. should be exponentially small. Okay, so we finished, so <laughs> let us start to speak again.